You catch up with us now in the end of the January transfer window. And again, we have lost some ballers. We lost Naheem Karimi to Manchester City for a steal of £18 million. That was his minimum release. He didn't want to sign a new contract. The border obviously had to accept it because that was the terms of his contract. And he went to Manchester City. And it's a shame to see him go. He was so good for us. 18 goals in 47 games. He will be missed, but we made big, big profit on him. Another player that wanted to go out of the football club as well was Job Bellingham. He wasn't getting played. He was moaning. He hasn't done much for us this season. And his career at Aris is looking like it's at an end. He's got a low move to Bayern Leverkusen where they can purchase him for £4.5 million. It isn't a lot for a player like Job. But he wasn't just playing in our midfield. And we can't keep unhappy players at the football club. But we did make some signings to replace those players. We we bought in Renan from Al Shabab. He's been very, very good for us. He's played 14 games. He came in at the end of the summer transfer window and he's been solid at the back. Can play left back or he can play at centre half. He mainly plays at centre half for us, I have to say. Other players that we brought in is a Euros winner, Karadras from Olympiakos. We needed some Greeks in the team and he fits the mould. In the summer, we're going to have to sign Greeks as we are running low on those sort of type of of players other players we brought in well there was one big one and it was Masari he comes in to replace Naheem Karimi he's been very very good for us in the league one goal in two games which is absolutely class he scored in the Champions League for us two and two as well he's going to be playing as a winger but can also play up front he is a generational talent and in the leagues and in the competitions we are still absolutely flying we're top of the Greek Super League with a game in hand, seven points clear. I mean, you know, we at this stage we're just dominating domestically. It's not even, it's not even competitive. We're in a semi-final against Olympiakos in the Greek Cup as well, and we progressed in the Champions League. We finished joint top with Liverpool. They did beat us on goal difference though, so we're absolutely smashing the competitions this season. Can we bring home a second Champions League? Let's find out. Wayne Rooney was the host of the round of 16 draw and he gave us an absolute peach. He gave us Valencia, one of the easiest draws we could have got. Milan play PSG. Napoli go to Juventus. We got Valencia. Sort of ego Liverpool. Monaco Arsenal. Bayern Munich Nice. Barcelona Man City. Another big team is going out. Man United Newcastle. How do we get on against Valencia? Valencia was as easy as cake as Jorquerez put us 2-1 up in the second leg to absolutely hammer Valencia 6-2 on Agra. They just wasn't on our level, not on any day of the week could they have beaten us and it sets up a fantastic tie. After progressing past Valencia quite easy, we got a very tough draw in the quarterfinals. Thanks for that, Mark Overmars. We have got Liverpool in the next round. Paris Saint-Germain go to Juventus. Arsenal played Bayern and Man City versus Man United in a Manchester derby in the quarterfinal of the Champions League. And if we were to progress past Liverpool, we would have a rematch against the Ninja Turtle FC or Juventus in the semi-final. But let's see how we got on against Liverpool first. Liverpool under Vincent Company were not the same side as what they were under Klopp as Ben Rondame away from home puts us up in the tie. We beat them back to back 2-1. It was tight but better finishing from us puts us into the semi-finals against Juventus. We avoid Ninja Turtle FC. It was looking like it could be a famous trip to Turin for Aris but in the first leg we were beaten but Jorquerez capitalized on a hide or mistake putting us 1-0 up late on in the game but they bought Fabio Muretti off the bench and he was the key in this to turn this tie around in the 85th minute he smacked in his first goal unmarked in the box nothing the goalkeeper could do about that and there was drama late on as Muretti struck again as Cambiasso picks up the loose free kick twists and turns finds Muretti and smashes it in to give Juventus the advantage However, we wasn't to be denied as the second leg proved to be the, the key one. As at home, we haven't lost a Champions League game and Savage got us back into the tie in the 68th minute. A little VAR check did my heart a big flood, but it was a goal at the end of the game. And in the 93rd minute of extra time, we struck in the first half. Our boys were tired and flat on their feet, but it was that man again, Savage, the key signing in the summer, the Montenegrin international Looked like he was put us in front. Prada was sent off in this game. And Savic again was the key man as Renan made us march to the final. 
But before we get into that final against Bayern, let's take a look at how the other Greek sides got on in Europe this season, as this is a builder nation side. And AEK Athens did absolute wonders. They were only beaten 2 1 against Chelsea and lost 2 0 in the home leg. They got to the quarterfinal of the Europa League for the first time. This is massive for Greek football. We never get this far. Other competitions as well were looking fairly strong. Four Greek sides as Pauk also got to the Europa Conference League quarterfinals and were knocked out eventually by Leipzig. They were outclassed in that game. It is a shame to see, but it's big progress from the Greek teams and this will show that we can do well in Europe and build our coefficients for next season. And we've done it again. A 2-1 victory against Bayern Munich this time. Harry Kane couldn't get his Champions League. We've done it. This squad has performed miracles this season in the Champions League. We got to the semis last year, but this year we have done it. The ticker tape and firework time calms down. Bayern Munich beaten in the final. They were not at their best and we took our chances. I'm calling it the Samuel Husto final because he was incredible in this game and our fans are going absolutely mad in the stands the second time that their club has won it in four years what an achievement this is for the boys these this team can celebrate as much as they want but they will most likely be getting bidded for by bigger clubs and there are the game stats it was an equal game but we just took our chances just those scored and then tell from the penalty spot but Masari was not to be denied the guy who came in in January has won it for us and he has done it let's see now how we got on domestically at domestic level, we were dominant again, and it was our first Greek Super League title in our new stadium. The boys beat Olympiakos 5-1 to secure it. The new stadium is inaugurated with another league title, our sixth league title in a row. We are dominant domestically. We are absolutely smashing it in Europe as well. What a season it's been, but the Greek Cup final is yet to come, but the boys will enjoy this ticker tape and firework time again. And we round off this episode with completing the domestic double. It was never in doubt. Levin Icos, they didn't really have a chance in this game. It was all us. It could have been seven or eight. But what a great way to end the episode. Having done the Champions League, the Greek League, and now the Greek Cup, we go into the World Cup Club Championship with a massive chip on our shoulder. And I will see you on the next video.